Um, I am enthralled to be here. And uh, it's been, I cannot believe, uh, it's hard for me to fathom that it's been over a decade for me in this industry, in the communications industry. I meet people from diverse bandwidths, uh, as uh, Ashita read it, uh, and all of them, they have thrived in their own professional field. Um, and irrespective of their career choices, something is universal. Something makes them extraordinary. Something makes them unique and different. And uh, in a world where we uh, you know, are so competitive, uh, considering the current scenario, also the post effects of the pandemic, uh, they're, they're, they've been humongous, right? And um, the economy has changed. The world around has, has changed. So in this situation, how do we succeed professionally? That is the most imperative question, right? So in this session, even before I start sharing the screen, uh, first things first, I want to really uh, thank the Chamber of Tax Consultants for having me here today, uh, for um, giving me this opportunity to not only present fresh perspectives on this topic, but also, uh, in a way, I feel satiated when I'm able to help people. It gives me immense joy. And um, one request that I have for uh, each and every single person here is that uh, I want you to thoroughly enjoy this session. I don't know where you're tuning in from right now, but I want you to completely relax, sit back, if possible, have a, you know a mini notepad or you know something that you can write. Maybe it's your journal, maybe it's your diary, whatever that is. Have it. Have your glass of water. Just relax. I want you to completely relax because it is said, according to scientists, that when you relax, when you are in a pleasant mode, when you're happy, when you're excited, you learn something quicker. And you also not only learn something quicker, but it's, it's going to stay more. You're going to think of it more. You're going to use it more because you've had a pleasant experience while learning it. So uh, just make sure that you're really relaxed, that you're really uh, enjoying the session. And most importantly, uh, I want this particular intensive session, if I may say so, to not be just a one-sided lecture, because uh, we all have been, we can all agree, in that lecture, uh, which was one-sided, and there was no conversation, there was no engagement. So throughout this session, if uh, I ask you a question, you can always answer in the chat box, because I really want to understand it. It's just not me teaching you something. I'm here to learn too. I'm open to learning as well. Having said that, put a big smile on your faces and I am going to share the screen. Great. All right. Okay, so what are we talking about today? We're speaking of winning in the professional world. First things first, why are we even talking about this? Why does it even matter? Why does work matter? You see, the world works on work. Yes, because imagine if I stop doing what I'm doing. Imagine if you stop doing what you're doing. Imagine if everybody stops doing what they're doing. How would the cycle work? How would the cycle of the world work? Forget the economy, just for us to survive, we all have certain roles and responsibilities, starting from our own home. Yes, that we distribute. So work is worship and work is what keeps us sane. It keeps our world going. So this is a reason why we're talking about why we need to win in the professional world. Now, here's the thing. OK, uh, there is something that I want to uh, tell you when we speak of how to thrive at work, how to have a successful career. These techniques, these rules, or if I may say so, these tips that I'm about to share with all of you, um, irrespective of your field, right? It doesn't matter. You can use them, you can integrate them into your uh, career, and I'm hoping that it benefits you. So let's look at our goals at a glance. What's number one thing? To hone and elevate fundamental skills required to thrive professionally. So in the session, we're going to be discussing that. That is our goal to gain fresh insights on the art of people skills, communication, and networking. We'll be touching upon that because we're nothing without people. When we speak of work, of course, we need people. And also for professional relationships, 
hello, who do you have relationships with? Not just yourself, people. Uh, from your office to even maybe a gathering that you have professionally to summits and conferences, you need people. For you to uh, be referred by an individual, you need people, you need influence. And our education system, unfortunately, teaches us how to score uh, good grades and ACE standardized tests, but we're never ever told that your talent, yes, it's important, but your network is even more important than that. What you know, is excellent but who do you know that is i think very important so number three is to integrate business etiquette practices and learn to build an impactful personal image the reason why we're discussing personal image today is perhaps because we want to be able to show people who we are and oftentimes who people perceive us to be and who we want to be perceived you know it's completely different right uh, like, for example, if I have a specific image of me that I want to portray because I'm in the specific profession with a specific designation and I'm doing something that's completely opposite to that, people think of me in a different way and that does affect my relationship. Yes, that does affect my career. So we'll take a little bit of a deep dive into that as well. So these are our goals for today. Okay. Um, a brain food fact for you right here. According to the Oracle study on survey, it was found that a whooping 97% of the Indian workforce wants to make career changes this year. 97% of the Indian workforce wants to switch their careers this year in 2022. What's the reason? Because people are not happy in their jobs. People are not happy with their careers. They're not successful. Or maybe it's not something that they want to do. But of course, a huge chunk of it is also because they're not happy with what they're doing. Right? So how can we change that? And yes, we have uh, other numbers as well. I will be sharing that just give me a minute. Yes, so it says 5% of Indians are facing major obstacles in their path forward in the form of financial struggles. That is 38%. Not knowing what career change to make and if it makes sense for them, that is 27% of the Indian workforce. Lack of confidence to make that change, to take the decision to change the career, that's 22% of the Indian workforce. And no growth opportunities within their company where they feel like, okay, I'm going to the office every day, meeting the same people, it's the same talk, same meetings and they feel that they're really in a stagnant phase. So that sort of percentage is 29%. And globally, Indians, 76% of Indians said that they're facing major obstacles within their careers. So the question here is, why? Why are we not happy with our jobs? Imagine the world could be such a better place, uh, such an amazing place that we all would say, hey, I'm going to work and I love it. Right. Or, you know, I'm I'm seeing the desired growth that I always wanted to have in terms of my career. This is where I want to go. This is where, you know, this is where I want to reach. This is what I want to achieve, whether it, it is in terms of the respect that you want, whether it is in terms of the finances, whether it is in terms of the kind of people you're surrounded by professionally, all of that. So let's have a look at it. Okay, so I'm asking you this question. What can we do to change that? How can we be more successful in our careers? And how do we succeed professionally? So I want you to answer this question. Whatever that is you think of this, whatever your answers are, please let me know in the chat box. Of course, I mean, if you have uh, situations that are not in your hand, not in your control, there is no use mulling over them. But uh, if you can make the decision, if you think that this is something that I want to do, and once you're in that career, once you've chosen that career path or route, how do you be successful? That's my question. Okay, anyone can tell me, how do we succeed professionally? What do you think is very important? What can we do now that we're already in our careers? 
Okay, and Nishita says, give 100% commitment to the profession. Yes, absolutely right. A lot of them actually do give their 100% and still don't succeed at work. So what do you think? What can, what can be some of the other things that uh, may be uh, contributing to the failure of our profession? Introspect, Jagdish, right? Yes, introspection is important, yes. And even Nishita and Jagdish, both of you are absolutely right, but there is a missing link uh, that uh, we tend to overlook as people. Your knowledge should be updated regularly, very important. Satish says your knowledge should be regularly updated. Yes, it's important to be updated. Uh, Durai Murugan says, stay updated and be empathetic. True, these are really important qualities. Okay, and anyone else? And then I'll tell you what the answer could be. What the answer is, rather. Mindset, yes. That is a very important factor. It is a very important factor. Mindset is one of the important factors. But uh, the way you can completely transform the career, you know, change the kind of graph, elevate your, uh, you know, um, or uplift, uh, you know, or attract more opportunities in your career and succeed is by mastering fundamental skills. As I said earlier, our education system teaches us how to be, um, you know, how to ace standardized tests. What about authenticity? What about uniqueness? What about creativity? What about innovation? And what about life skills, such as people skills? Because as I said, people are the ones who make you, who push you forward, who prod you forward. So we need people to succeed. Yes? And for that, you need certain skills. And you know what, this, what those skills are? They're communication, the art of networking. Networking is very important, extremely important. The art of influence, the art of small talk. Because imagine how many opportunities are awaiting you if you, if you take that initiative to speak to someone, if you take that initiative to have the list of people that you, to go and meet those people you've always wanted to meet, to have the contacts that you wanted to have. Yes, along with it, the kind of conduct that you need to have, business etiquette, your personal image. We'll talk about all of these things right now. So we need to master essential skills in order to thrive professionally. Your knowledge is good. Your intelligence is good. But even if you have these two things, if you don't know how to communicate your knowledge, what use is your knowledge? Yes. So we need to be able to communicate. And this I say is important in all professions, not just your specific profession, but in all profession, all different kinds of profession, communication tops the list. And within communication, you have verbal and nonverbal communication. What's the difference? Verbal communication is using words, using a language. Nonverbal communication is not using you know, words in a language. So for example, my body language is nonverbal. The clothes that I'm wearing, I wouldn't speak a word, but I would just sit mum like that. I would keep mum. And you can still have something in your mind. You could still receive a message in your headspace. So even without me uttering a single word, I am still communicating. That's the power of nonverbal communication. And most of us, we think, hey, if I'm a great speaker, I am articulate, I am a communicator. That's not true. You need to be able to have a good sync between your verbal and nonverbal communication. If you're communicating confidently from your mouth, but if your body is not helping you out, clearly people can understand you're not confident. And whenever you meet someone professionally, it shows, you know? Because if you are not confident, if you are showing that you're not confident, automatically the trust factor, that is in danger because the opposite person is not going to have conviction in you. And if the opposite person loses his or her conviction in you, 
you've lost the deal, you've lost the opportunity, you've lost it all. So trust is very important. How can you have that? You can have that with effective communication. And this I say with your clients, with, with the people you meet professionally, you need to be able to communicate effectively. So that is verbal and nonverbal communication. Number two is the art of small talk. Now, you may wonder, Tenzin, if you've said effective communication is, you know, paramount when we speak of professional success, then what is small talk? Well, small talk is the foundation we lay for the big talk. Whenever I get on a call with Ashita, for example, when I was in, you know, uh, coordinating with Ashita talking about the session, I wouldn't say, hey, so we're going to talk about this in the session. First, I pick up the phone. I say, hello, Ashita, a very good evening. How are you? This small talk, this is the small talk we have before we have the real talk. And the better the small talk, the better the big talk. So whenever you have a conversation with people, whether again, as I said, with your clients, with anyone in the professional world, in the professional spectrum, have, pay heed to your small talk and don't keep it like, a, don't make it sound very ad nauseum or something that's repeated over and over again, but make it interesting. You don't have to say, so you can just say, um, what's exciting today? Instead of asking, how are you? So just try to freshen things up a little bit can really change a lot of things for you and also establish um, uh, sort of in a way, a good image of you, a good impression of you, because uh, that does play a part uh, in our work, isn't it? And of course, art of networking, influence, as I said, who you know really plays the part. Uh, business communication and etiquette. Business communication and etiquette, well, the difference between communication and business communication is that business communication, in business communication, you need to have a bit of a more mindful tone. You're mindful of the person's designation. You're mindful of the work that you're doing and you speak accordingly. You communicate accordingly. Your body language changes accordingly. So we'll talk about that and etiquette. What is etiquette? Can somebody answer what etiquette is? And I hope um, through, you're just enjoying the session right now as you're listening to me because that's something that's very important to me. Uh, Whenever I meet people after my sessions, I want uh, people to tell me that that was a pleasant experience and I want to be remembered that way. So uh, please tell me, what is your idea of etiquette? In the chat box. Pardon, I'm just gonna sip some water. Do you know what etiquette is? Etiquette is cultural preferences. No, my dear, no, that is unfortunately wrong. Etiquette are behaviors which respect others. Yes, that is true. That is correct, Nishita. But Jagadish, thank you so much for that. It was, it was nice of you to attempt. I love people who attempt because then when you make mistakes, when you attempt, that is when you learn something new, isn't it? Uh, acceptable behavior. Well, etiquette um, is something we can, we can call a social conduct. Something as simple as opening the door for someone or uh, something as simple as saying thank you. All of these things, they display our politeness. Yes, so this is etiquette. And uh, the way you address someone, when you get too personal with a person you shouldn't be, in your office, at your workplace, with your clients, it is against business etiquette. Even the way you dress up for you know, work, that also comes under etiquette because you are, if you're dressed up in a you know, really holiday kind of uh, clothing, then you're definitely prohibiting and disrespecting your client by appearing in that manner. So that falls under etiquette. The way you dine, if you've ever attended business meetings, uh, you know, done uh, business deals over lunch, over luncheon or over dinner, that is something that you need to keep in mind. Uh, dining etiquette is very important. How do you use different cutleries? How do you how do you use fork and knife? How do you you know place the napkin? All of that does make a world of a difference, and it just uh, shape an image of you in someone else's mind. 
So it is very, very cardinal. Then building your personal image, we'll talk about what that is, leadership and management. I cannot stress more on this and lay more emphasis because uh, we think that not everybody has to be a leader. Well, I deny that because if we always have that mindset, then no one will take the initiative. And when I say leadership, I don't mean to lead the team always. I mean to just lead the conversation, to lead something. It doesn't have to be a team only. It could be anything in life. Imagine you're in an elevator and uh, you know a person uh, is with you in the elevator and you have an awkward silence waiting for uh, you know, uh, level four to reach and you're just waiting when we're going to reach, when we're going to reach, and then the conversation never happens. But if the situation was different, had you initiated the conversation, if he was a business tycoon, he could be an industrialist, he could be someone, he could have amazing opportunities for you, she could have, or she could have amazing opportunities for you, but you missed the bus. You didn't initiate the conversation. You didn't take the step. You were not the leader of your life. You know, you were not the leader who could change the shape of your career, who could change the direction and dimension of your career. So that is very important. And managing your work, we'll talk about that moving further in this session. And we have outlook and individual mindset. Somebody had said mindset is very important. I completely agree with you because uh, the way we look at our work is very important. If you're looking at work as a form of uh, generating income, you're not doing much because you're only focusing on the uh, you know commercial aspect of it. But if you think the other way, what am I offering? What difference am I making in this industry being in this profession? So there are many things. If you're just looking at your work from 2D, it'll not give you any new perspective. Rather, if you look at your work from seven different dimensions, 7D, imagine the, the kind of variation of perspectives that you can have, and you can use these perspectives to your benefit. Okay, so um, let's start with um, communication. Now, what's the relationship between communication and work? Yes, so in the beginning of the session, somebody said, you know, at workplace, you need to have these qualities, you need to be able to do this, have an open mindset and all that. But, but do you know, do you know, according to research by E.T. Clemmer in 1972, it was found, and this research was called measurement of time spent communicating. It was found that 50 to 80 percent of her workday is spent in communicating, two thirds of that in talking. That means we are talking a lot. We're communicating a lot, lot even at our workplace, and it not only shapes our relationships but also our career. Yes, can we all agree? And uh, I've seen a lot of these people, whenever they're in a business meeting or office meeting, uh, there are you know, different personalities that surround the table. One that always says, this is not right, or objects. One that says, everything is right, I completely agree. One that is confused, one that is not listening. <laughs> so there are different kinds of people within the board meeting. But the one who speaks, the one who openly communicates and expresses is the go-getter, is the opportunist. So you decide who you want to be, which personality across the table you want to be. You want to be the confused soul. You want to be the one who's always, always objecting somebody's ideas. Or you want to be someone who is welcoming, who is open, who not only listens to others' perspectives, but also places their perspectives forward he creates or she creates a sense of mutual respect and participation and is an opportunist. So who do you want to be? You decide. All right, so how do we communicate effectively? If communication is so important for us to thrive professionally, then how do we do it? Number one, articulate your thoughts into meaningful words and sentences. We have on an average thousands, maybe lakhs, if I were to say, of thoughts in a day. But we cannot use all of these thoughts and say all of our thoughts. We can't do that. We have to be selective of our thoughts. 
what is the most important idea or thought and then articulate in the most precise manner to people because if you're making it like a big chunk of information and you're putting across you know communicating with people definitely people are like what should i pay attention to this or this so even with your thoughts whenever you're communicating with someone in the professional world be selective about what you want to say and articulate precisely know your strong suit and have conviction in it this i say with conviction because if you know about something say it talk about it with complete confidence if you don't i think it's better to not open your mouth because if you're going to act like you know about something when you don't you're going to stutter and that's going to show and that could have a bad impression uh, it's okay to not know something and i think it's better if you say hey i don't know about this and be honest because a lot of times even with a lot of politicians i've seen that when they don't have an answer to the question and they say oh well you know i was trying to say that and then oh, 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 and then the stutter happens so that completely breaks the link between the listener and the speaker and and the effect is not amplified so if you don't know about something have no knowledge about it even when you're communicating with clients for that matter say i don't know and if you know say it with full conviction number three is establish clarity on the objective of your communication because why is it important to have an objective for your communication I mean, imagine we're in the session and we don't know what the objective of the session is. Is there any point? We would be like free moving electrons everywhere in every direction and nothing would be achieved. So we need to have clarity before speaking to someone, before heading for a conversation. No, okay, what do I wanna talk about? What is the objective? If you know your objective, then you present and craft your message accordingly. Don't just communicate, connect. That is what I'm trying to do. That is what I always try to do. And uh, because many people communicate, they say they go blah, 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 but do they touch our heart? Do they strike a chord with us? Do they connect with us on an emotional, if not emotional, on a personal level? That's the goal, because if I'm able to, you know, make home in your heart in some way, then, I think my communication is successful. Connection matters in the professional world, not just communication. Offer value, offer fresh perspectives. As I said earlier, very important. Don't always think about what can I get from this person? What can I get from this opportunity? What can you offer to this person? What can you offer to someone or to some group of people with this opportunity? I think that's uh, outlook is really important because if you're only thinking about I, me, and myself, then um, it's it's not a very good thing. It's I would say it's a wrong um, ethos to have. And then avoid the sin of monotony. What is monotony? Monotony is doing the same thing over and over again. Imagine if you were, uh, you know, you have a piano and you uh, press on the key, play one key over and over again you're gonna have like, you're gonna say, what is this? This is noise pollution. This is irritating. But if I play it beautifully, different uh, pitches and different keys, it becomes music. So in the same way, if I'm saying the same word, same word, same word, same word, same word, see, look at that, it's annoying. A lot of people tend to repeat something over and over again in their conversation, thinking that they're sort of in a way emphasizing or highlighting that, but it turns out that it you know it has a diverse effect it has a uh, it has not a very desired effect so we need to be able to avoid the sin of monotony look around you in nature there is diversity yes there are mountains there are waterfalls there are dessert desserts there are, there are different kinds of landscapes in the world different kinds of species why do we have variety in life so that we can enjoy it in the same way with your communication, whether it is with our pitch, low pitch and high pitch, whether it is with our emotion. Look at me, I'm using my hands, I'm using my facial expressions, different tone, my tone changes when I say a specific word. All of that brings a unique charm to my communication. So in the same way, you can also charm people. And I, and I don't mean to say, 
you know, charm, charm per se, but have a good effect basically when you're speaking with someone, communicating with someone um, and uh, your voice is sounding pleasant. Ask open-ended questions. You're speaking with someone, okay? And you ask, do you like coffee? Yes. Do you like tea? Yes. This is a close-ended question. Why? Because you're not really um, getting into a full-fledged conversation. If I say it this way, why do you like coffee? Then there is scope for conversation. Then you can get some detail out of the person. In the same way, if you are talking to your colleague, if you're talking to your uh, you know, client or someone, you are connected uh, in, in a more formal way, professional way. If you wanna have a more detailed, in-depth conversation, I wanna gain some insights from your conversation, ask open-ended questions. Maybe, when you ask open-ended questions, you will know about an opportunity. You will know about a conference that is going to be held next month and you could go there. Yes. So then we have value, feedback, and anticipate disagreements. Why is it important to anticipate disagreements? Because we're different human beings. We all have different experiences. We all hail from different backgrounds. We all uh, you know, come from different cultures. So being different people with different heads, with different mindsets, we're all going to disagree at some point. So be open, you know, anticipate disagreements with people because, uh, you know, uh, crisis communication is very important. Conflict resolution is very important. You should, uh, you must have heard this. It may sound as, it may come to you as a very cliche thing, but uh, you respond, don't react. So listen to the person who's disagreeing with you and think about it. If the person is right about it, and change that. If the person is not right about it, then you let them know that maybe they have perceived your message or you in a wrong way. So value feedback, take that, but know what to keep and what not to keep and uh, anticipate disagreements. Pay heed to the small talk. I told you what small talk is. Great, so these are some tips for effective communication. There are a few more. Uh, and I believe that in your career as lawyers, as CAs, as, as whatever it is you do in your field, these things can come quite handy. And expanding your diction. Why is expanding your diction important? Can somebody uh, tell me what, what could be the reason why for effective communication, expanding your diction could be beneficial? Diction is knowing more words, choice of words, right? Selection of words. So you see for the word happiness, you have joy, you have um, gay, you have, uh, you know, um, happy. So you have different words synonyms for the same word. So the more words you know, the more words you have to express yourself. Exactly. So to express more and to uh, carry the clear meaning of your message. The more words you know, it helps you to express yourself, what you're feeling. Yes? Great. Then master different ways of rephrasing your message. If I'm saying, for example, I have this bottle of water, okay? And I say, this is the bottle of water. And I now should be able to rephrase the same message. What do I say? How can I say the same thing in a different way? The bottle of water is here, right? If I'm saying I have a bottle of water or the bottle of water is here. So you change and think that if there is a message, how can I say the same message in different ways? Because different people prefer different ways of receiving their message according to the environment, according to the ambience, according to your situation. You can use this phrasing, rephrasing technique, the same message, staying it in different ways. Then we have the salami tactic. Do you know what salami is? Yes, it's a dish, it's a food item. So in salami, what do you do is you slice. If I were to give you a better example, imagine a loaf of bread, okay? And you have this huge 
uh, loaf of bread. Would you have the loaf of bread just like that? No, you would, you know, cut it into slices. Yes, one by one, apply uh, peanut, butter, peanut butter jelly or whatever, and then you have it. In the same way, in the same way, imagine that this loaf of bread is your message, okay? You have this amount of information. You cannot present or give your message with this huge loaf of bread. So you cut it into slices and offer in digestible slices for the listener or audience or the person to assimilate. Yes? Right? Because what you're doing is if you're giving them an overwhelming, an overload of information, they're going to lose interest in your conversation. So first, the first slice, the first loaf of the bread, the first slice of the loaf of the bread, the most important message goes first. And then the supporting message goes second. The third one is the conclusion of the first and the second slice. So I hope that's clear. The salami tactic is being selective about your message, cutting your message into slices, keeping in mind that the most important message goes first. And to support that message, you, you know, share the second slice and then the third. In that way, your communication is more impactful. Respond strategically. As I said earlier, if you have disagreements uh, in your career with people, with clients, whoever that is, respond strategically. And then apply inflection. Do you know what inflection is? Do you know? Can anybody guess what inflection could mean? Exactly. Nishita Pandya says, and this is so good, this bottle carries water. That's another way of saying it. So look at that. It's the same thing, but imagine in how many different ways you could say that. That's amazing. So can anybody guess what inflection could mean? Point of connection, okay? could say that. Well, inflection is breathing life into your words and sentences, breathing life. When you put emotion, when you have emotion um, with your words and sentences that you're speaking, that is called inflection. If I'm saying, I'm happy, I'm happy is just a sentence. But when I put my emotion into it and don't sound robotic, that's inflection. Okay, so inflection is very important because it helps you express what you really want to express. It breathes life, puts, it's like a soul of, of our communication. We need to have inflection. Of course, we don't go overboard with our inflection. We keep balance. It's very important. But inflection is very important considering that who is at work? Who are we? We're people, we're human beings, and we need emotion to connect. So inflection is very important. All right, so great. Be vested in your subject. Of course, if you're saying something and your um, focus is everywhere, then you're going to lose track of what you're trying to say. So be vested in your subject is something that I really want to implore. Okay, so as I said that when, when it comes to communication, right? Uh, having a very confident uh, verbal communication alone won't do. You need a positive body language because your mouth can lie, but your body cannot. I mean, if I'm sitting in front of you right now and I'm sounding very confident, imagine if I was restless, I was moving and I was fidgeting and I was, you know, doing all of that. You will know that Ben Zinchudun is nervous, but I'm clearly not because I personally feel that when you're at you know, uh, ease and when you're tranquil about this whole process, it uh, also helps the other person uh, mimic you. So if you're restless, the other person also gonna, is going to feel more uncomfortable. So to avoid that, I put my body at ease. So some techniques for you for positive body language. And these techniques, you can use it in your everyday work life. Number one is 
unfold your arms and keep your palms open while speaking. This signals openness of an individual. So a lot of times you must have seen people who lie, people who are not confident about themselves, they put their hands inside their pockets. Do not do that. If you want to gain trust, you know, with people in your uh, professional setup, Whenever you speak with them, whenever you see them, keep your palms open because psychologists say that when you keep your palms open, it signals confidence, it signals openness, that you have nothing to hide. Okay? Open palms. I hope you'll keep that in mind. Unfold your arms, keep your palms open while speaking. That's number one. Number two is forming a pyramid. You know the pyramid of Egypt, right? Pyramid of Giza. Yes. So in the same way you form a pyramid, when you're speaking a point, for example, if I say, number one, I want to say this, number two, I want to, and this pyramid you can use when you're public speaking, when you're speaking somewhere, uh, maybe addressing uh, in a conference or summit or even a webinar like this, you can use this. So point number one is this, this is what I want to say. Of course, don't do it too much, otherwise it's going to look mechanical but whenever you can in a subtle way do this it's a pyramid when your hands form a pyramid you signal confidence can you try it with me this is the pyramid yes 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 tenzin we got it okay great then we have um number three it is posture if i gave this session if i addressed this session with you right now like this weird right does it, does it display confidence? Does it portray the best of me? Does it, does it portray that Tenzin is, is uh, comfortable with herself? I don't think so. So posture is very important because it can literally change who you are, both personally and professionally. Because a good posture can not only help you with breathing well, and so your voice is sound going, going to sound better, and also it automatically makes you feel more confident, makes you feel more active. That's why when we watch television and binge watch Netflix or whatever, we sit like this, right? And why do we do that? Because we want to relax. But 24 or 7, are you in that, are you going to be in that mode? No. So when you're working, and in general in life, I would highly recommend that you change your posture, especially when you're communicating with someone, because it can literally change your entire life. So this is the difference between good posture and uh, poor posture. You can have a look here. Yes, so good posture has uh, abdomen tucked in and it has an upright posture and uh, poor posture has abdomen out, literally our stomach and everything is out and we sit like this. We don't wanna sit like that, right? It also isn't very appealing, I believe, okay? Great, so I have a question for all of you. Uh, which one is a genuine smile? Of course, we'll try to speed up this a little bit so that we have more time for Q&A. Which one is a genuine smile, you think? The one on the left or the one on the right? What do you think? Look at these faces and smiles. Which one do you think is more genuine? To the left, people say second. Second, to the left, to the left. To shape. Yes, somebody says right. Okay, so if you guessed <laughs> this one, then you're right. This is a general smile. So whenever you meet meeting someone, of course, nobody wants to have a business deal or have any kind of uh, relationship uh, with, a, with a frowny face, with, with somebody who's always complaining and criticizing and sad and angry all the time. People want to have relations or want to communicate more with those who smile more often. And this is a reason why you'll see me a lot more. And uh, in the beginning, it sounds a bit too artificial, but over time, it becomes your nature. And what, what's uh, you know amazing is that when it becomes your nature, you don't have to pretend that you're smiling. You're always smiling. So this is genuine smile. A symmetrical smile is a more genuine sign of happiness, especially with wrinkles around your eyes. So this young lady is genuinely smiling. And I would really recommend that you 
and do that in front of your mirror. If not, if you think it's kind of uncomfortable for you to do that, you feel it's funny, it's hilarious to look at yourself smile, and you can always ask someone or you can take uh, maybe a, a photo of yourself uh, so that you will know how your smile is. So this is a more genuine smile whenever you meet someone for the first time. Next time, maybe when you meet your clients, you can smile like this with a little bit of wrinkles around your eyes. And most importantly, smile from the deepest pinnacles of your heart. Okay? All right, all right. I'm going to speed it up now. Personal image. What is personal image? And why is it important to succeed in our professional world? Personal image is not what you see in the mirror. If you're looking at yourself and say, oh, this is my personal image, you're wrong. What you perceive of yourself after looking at your physical image is your personal image. So um, it's really important to understand who you are as a person. What's your style, whether it is in terms of your clothing, because clothing does make a lot of difference in terms of how people perceive you. What are the kinds of colors you wear? Um, how do you sit? How do you talk? How do you behave? So your entire code of conduct, including your communication, is going to shape your personal image. And the better the personal image, the better opportunities you're going to attract. You're going to be a magnet too. Uh, for example, this is this is uh, the example that I always give people. Uh, you know Ranveer Singh, right? Ranveer Singh, the Bollywood actor. He comes in these commercials which has toothpaste and, um, you know, Max Fresh, it's called, right? So why does Max Fresh have him? Why does, why does the brand have him? Because his personal image is active is cheerful, is fresh, is always energetic, you see? So this is the kind of impact our personal image can have. So because of this personal image of Ranveer Singh, he got the commercial of Max Fresh. So in the same way, depending on your personal image, you could get and attract similar opportunities. So be mindful of what you're portraying out there. Don't be like, oh, who cares what people think? No, it does matter what people think. Of course, only the only the part where I uh, am trying to emphasize not what people think about you in terms of gossip and all the grapevine communication that happens everywhere. It's normal. But the things that we need to pay heed to, like our personal image, I think is very important. So uh, pay attention and ask yourself these questions. Who am I? What's my story? What am I all about? What's my style? How do I want to communicate? How do I want to dress up? Yes? So all of that could really make a world of a difference. And most importantly, everybody must have something that's yours, a signature style. What's your signature style? Have that. Because in that way, people will remember you better. Also have a tagline for yourself. You must have seen uh, major companies, uh, even major brands have, uh, you know, um, Taglines, like for example, Amul Butter has utterly, butterly delicious. In the same way, what is your tagline? Yes, you can say energetic, enigmatic, working towards a dream, whatever that is, whatever that is, have a tagline, have a mission statement for you in your career, in your profession. And most importantly, whenever you meet someone to network with, which I'm going to be, which is the final segment of our session today, after which we'll have Q&A. Um, networking is very important because, as I said, that uh, what you know is important, but who you know is also very important because uh, whether it comes to job referrals, whether it comes to uh, referrals for opportunities, you need people to climb the ladder. It doesn't work like that. And nobody tells you that, unfortunately. So networking works like a plant, right? Uh, if you sow the seeds now, then you get the reap the benefits of the of the plant, the seeds later on. The plant grows gradually and slowly. It takes some time, but when it does, then you can reap all the benefits from it. Know your objective of networking. Attend events and conferences, and most importantly, stay in touch. Whatever communication techniques you've learned today and a little bit of self-introspection techniques uh, with building your personal image that I have shared with all of you, Go network now. And this, whenever I talk about staying relevant, 
people go like, oh, is it really important, Tencent, to stay relevant? I say yes. It's important to stay relevant, whether it is through your social media, whether it is through your work. Stay, keep buzzing, you know, keep that buzz going because people have so much work, they may forget you. So sometimes using social media or any other platform in a way that you have certain buzz, you create some buzz around your professional network, I think it really does uh, play a part. So Keep yourself relevant a little bit. Use your social media platforms. Uh, and um, I don't know if you're on social media, but any other platform uh, that you're open to, whether it is uh, you know physically attending conferences or summits where you actually meet people. And before you attend these conferences and uh, networking places, you create a list of people that you want to speak with because you know who the speaker is. Yes. So what do you want to get out of it? Why do you want to connect with these people? And how can they help you? with your future opportunities. So this is very, very important. And after you have their contact, stay in touch, whether it is uh, in times of festivals, whether it is, uh, you know, it's their birthday, you need to wish them, you need to stay in touch because as I said, people forget. They have so much work. If you keep in touch, they will remember you. If you don't, they will not. It's as simple as that. And they don't do it intentionally. It just so happens that our life is really busy. Business etiquette, as I said, dining etiquette, communication etiquette, and netiquette. Netiquette is your etiquette online. If you're on social media, you would know what netiquette is. Uh, it's how you behave online, how you speak online. It shouldn't be that when you're meeting someone, let's say you're meeting your client or colleague in person, you treat them with sheer respect. And then one day you go online and are not polite. That's prohibition of netiquette. Your etiquette on the internet is netiquette. Okay, so these are the tips that I wanted to share with you. And the summary is that to succeed in any field, effective and impactful communication is imperative. Pay heed to nonverbal cues because they're really important. And networking opens avenues to new opportunities build and maintain your personal image because you attract similar opportunities. So whatever I could uh, bring together today within this session, I have tried because um, uh, it is a topic which is very wide and we need deeper understanding. And maybe we need a deeper understanding on networking, on other aspects as well for which I completely have another session for. But for now, because I think we've covered a lot of aspects and we have so much information, so I'm gonna let it process today for all of you. Whatever that is you found valuable in this session, please do practice it because if we just have this in theory, there's no use to it. One day when you come to me and say, Tenzin, your tips were helpful, I'm going to be the happiest soul. So thank you so much, everyone. You were already socially connected with them. So if, you know, not, a, he was not a client originally, but he was socially connected with them. And then they were trying to make that person a client, but that didn't probably work out. And uh, how do you go back to being, uh, you know, how do you go back to having social interactions with them? I, maybe, maybe that was... Okay. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do is answer uh, two different questions related to what he said. For example, let's say the case, the question that he's asking is that he is uh, socially already connected with a person and uh, the, and the other person is uh, not willing to be his client, right? As Panvi mentioned. Yes. And so now it's kind of awkward because uh, the person is um, has said no or refused to be his client to have any kind of uh, business relationship. How do you get back to being the same, you know, connection? Right. Yeah. OK. Yes. So most importantly, what's important that is that that you whenever you communicate with someone, it does happen. Actually, this has happened with me quite uh, some time ago. And uh, one thing I realized from my experience is that uh, there have been people, my friends, who uh, said that, you know, um, maybe this is not the training for me, or maybe this is not something that we want to do. And uh, um, I, I have to be proactive. You should not ruin your relationship just because somebody refused your training. Maybe the person's refused your training now, 
but maybe they can take it forward later in the future. And if not in the future, maybe that person can refer you to someone who can have the training with you. So why think small and have a small vision when you can think long-term of have and have a bigger vision? Yes. So I think that is, uh, that is uh, something that's very, very uh, important because oftentimes we tend to have very short sight of things. If a person denies, you still get back to, you know, having the communication, whether it is, as I said, wishing them for festivals or their birthdays and just communicating. Having the small talk is something that we discussed in our session. Have the small talk because small talk eases. It's like an icebreaker. So once you have that uh, ice breaking done, then you can talk about it. You, you say, no problem. I completely understand you don't need my services or my, you know, whatever that is I'm offering right now. But if there's somebody in need who wants it, please do refer because you know you trust me because you know that you are in my circle. So people are going to, uh, you know, trust somebody who's referred by a person who already knows that person. Okay. So have that, um, you know, a uh, larger, uh, wider perspective when it comes to work. And um, don't show your desperation. Uh, that kind of uh, uh, completely drops your value. You don't want that to happen. You want to put your value because there are enough people in the world to put you down and to degrade you and to you know, devalue you. If you also devalue yourself by showing how desperate you are for work, then it's not going to be good. Uh, I'm not saying that you do it. I'm just saying that few people do. And in case, whether uh, unintentionally, your communication came across in a way that is very desperate, then the person may lose interest because you're going to, oh, this person is constantly selling me something, trying to sell me something. And it doesn't work out really well. So if the person refuses, no problem. You think of this, if I keep cordial relationships with this person, maybe this person can give me other opportunities by referring me to other, other people. Yes, we could do that. 